Give him a what a fam. Waka waka what? Oh, don't pop the booty. You pop on the booty for thousands of people. Dang, girl. All right, I see you. Yo, what a fam. What's up, guys? I know this is a little unpeculiar. I mean, unpeculiar? This is a little peculiar intro. But this is a uh, not a usual video you're going to see here on the JTC YouTube channel. This is raw. This is completely raw. One take, no editing. It's going to be a cool video. You guys are about to hear my whole Navy career. Um, it's about to be told right fucking now. As we go on my motorcycle. Let me just get my gloves real quick on. So yeah, guys, this is, like I said, this is going to be maybe once in a, once on the channel type of video. But this is going to be a cool ass, a long story, not too long, but I'm going to tell my whole Navy career right now. You're going to get the whole Navy career, the whole story of my job as an aviation mechanic in the Navy. Let me just get this bitch out of here. Ah, shit. So as you guys know, it's been raining like crazy. It's been raining like crazy in California. And finally, there's a little break of rain. So I'm like, dude, I've been dying to make this video. I've been dying to make this video. It's finally happening. Let me just hop on my girl, close the doors, and we are off. Woo! So life of JT suits in the, in the Navy. JT Suits, the Navy story. This is gonna be from the start to finish. Ah, oh boy. I'm gonna have to take this a little easy on the ride. The floor is very wet. Very wet. Hope, hopefully it doesn't rain like right now as I'm starting to go out. It looks kind of ominous. But to begin the story, I depped in in 2009. I depped into the military and I had to wait. I, I picked my job. I scored a 78 on the ASVAB. I depped in in 2009 and I had to pick. I had to wait for eight months in depth in the delayed entry program for aviation structure mechanic. The job that I chose was AM. So I waited my eight months, stayed out of trouble. I joined right after high school. I enlisted right after high school after I graduated so from pretty much uh, May after I graduated eight months after that I left for boot camp got through boot camp oh shit gotta be taking careful I got through boot camp in 2010 boot camp was easy boot camp was a breeze for me I've made many many videos about it on my channel you guys can find all of those below after boot camp boot camp was two months so now at this point I had been in about you know two months in the Navy obviously I just fucking said that after boot camp I went to a school so I got to spend the weekend with my family after I graduated the Saturday and I graduated on like a Friday then I got to spend Saturday and Sunday with my family in Chicago at Great Lakes and then they flew me out from Chicago to Pensacola, Florida, baby. Picola, baby. Do you? Picola. So once I got to Pensacola, Florida, I went there for my A school. For aviation, instructional mechanic A school. That's where pretty much all the aviation rates in the Navy are going to go to Pensacola. So I was there. It took about a month for me to class up. So the first month, month and a half, maybe the first month or two that I was in Pensacola, I was uh, pretty much assigned to a thing called barrack support. All I did was fucking clean the barracks every single day for about a month, month and a half straight. We just, we would like wake up, muster at 0800. We would go clean for a couple hours, have lunch, come back from lunch, clean for a couple more hours, and then we'd be done. That is barrack support. <laughs> That's what you, you might do in Pensacola for A school for the first month. After I got done with barrack support, I finally classed up into my A school. Finally classed up into my A school. 
Um, for Aviation Mechanic A School, it's pretty simple. It is very, there was nobody that failed. Zero people failed. It is very, very rare that anybody will fail out of AM A School. You have to be a really special fucking A. So pretty much A School for me was five months total. I was in Pensacola, Florida for five months. So now I was, I had been in the Navy for seven months, two months of boot camp, five months at A school. So this is where it gets interesting. This is where my Navy career got tricky. So after A school, that's when I picked my orders. Now remember guys, this was back in 2010. So I, I believe it's still the same when you guys pick orders, pretty much they let me pick. Um, they let you pick by how you did, how you finished in your A school class. So I finished top of the class. I was, I believe I finished um, third or fourth in the class for my high, for the, you know, my scores on all the tests and everything combined. So, they, they gave all the options, they listed out all the orders that you could pick, and when it came up to me, San Diego was still available. So I fucking chose Coronado, I chose San Diego orders, and I chose squadron orders. So, when you're out of A school, you can either go O level which is squadron, which is organizational, or you can go eye level, which is intermediate level. And I'm just going to explain this to you guys really simply. I'm just going to break it down because this is where it gets kind of confusing. So after A school, when you pick your orders, like I just said, you can go O level or I level. O level is what I did, is squadron level. You're going to work on the aircraft themselves. Now, when you take off the parts, when you work on the aircraft as a squadron, and O level, you're going to remove and replace the aircraft parts. Those parts are then going to get sent to I level. So that's what's the difference between O level and I level. Because I level, you're not attached to a squadron. You're attached to a thing called a fleet readiness center. A fleet readiness center. It's called FRC. So if you go I level, you'll go pretty much to an FRC and you're going to work on just the aircraft parts. You're not gonna you're gonna work on the parts that we took off that the squadron members took off We're gonna send them over to you guys at eye level. You're gonna fix them up. Then you're gonna send the parts back to us And we're gonna put them back on the aircraft, you know, and we're gonna install them and troubleshoot That's O level. That's the difference between O level and eye level right, So hopefully you guys understand the difference between O level and eye level just a little bit if anything so basically after a school like I said I picked my orders and I got Kilo Squadron, San Diego, baby. Let's go. Now, this is where it gets tricky. My deployment, I mean, my squadron was already deployed when I selected my orders. So my squadron, instead of flying me out for the last three months of deployment, instead of flying me out to the CVN-72 for only three months, they didn't waste all that money. Instead, they sent me to sea school to Jacksonville. So I got really, really lucky because uh, if I had joined the Navy just six months earlier, right after A school, after Pensacola, if I got those same helicopter squadron orders, I would have been sent out to the ship because they would have just started deployment. But because I got, because I, you know, got the orders when I did, when my squadron was towards the end of deployment, they were like, nope, we're not going to fly miners. We're not going to fly them out to the ship. We're going to send them to C school. So I got to go to Jacksonville and I got to go to C school right after my A school. So I pretty much went boot camp for two months, then A school for five months. And then after that, I got my first leave period. So after A school, I went home for two weeks. And then after my leave period, I went back out to Jacksonville and I was in Jacksonville for C school for about four months. So that closes me in on my one year mark pretty much and that is when I got to my squadron when they got back from deployment that's when I came out to San Diego after I finished C school and I started pretty much at my squadron at my one year mark once my squadron got back from deployment and once I got out there at my one year mark I was uh, coming up on E3 and they sent me not to my shop I didn't go to the aviation mechanic shop they sent me to the line the plane captain branch the line division that is pretty common for all undesignated airmen to go there that's where they're going to go and also most junior sailors regardless if you're an am ad at ae whatever you're going to go to the line shack so i got there i started working in the line shack i was there for a couple months 
And after about my after about four or five months, at about my year and a half mark, that's when we did my first deployment. So that's when I did my nine month deployment after I'd been in for about a year and a half. We did the combat tour to the prison goal. And that's when I went off, dude. That's when I hit my grind. When I was on that first deployment, I fucking got all my qualifications. I got my PC, I got my LSE, which is my landing segment enlisted where I launch and recover the helicopters. I fucking got my aviation warfare pin and I made petty officer third class all on that same deployment. So that's when I fucking just kicked ass and I made rank and got all my quals. I got back from that deployment. I was qualled up. I was a supervisor of the line of the plane captain branch now. They bumped me up to supervisor once I made petty officer third class on deployment. So we got back from that nine months and now I've been in about two and a half years. And I was a petty officer, third class. I was fully qualified. And this is where it was fucked up. We had just got back from nine month deployment and they tell us, hey, you guys are getting transferred to Japan. Holy shit. Our whole squadron got transferred from San Diego all the way to Japan to Itsugi. We swapped with a squadron that was in Itsugi and they came to San Diego. So I was one of the first, I was one of the first waves of people from our squadron to get over to Japan. They sent our squadron over in about five waves of, five groups of people, five waves. I was one of the first waves. We pretty much just set up the squadron over there in Itsugi. You know, like did a lot of painting and cleaning and a lot of bullshit. So at that point now, I'd been in the Navy almost three years. I was getting settled in in Japan. Eventually all our helicopters, eventually all our helicopters and equipment and all the personnel had moseyed on over from San Diego to Japan after all the five waves of people came through. And then we went on a fucking another deployment. And on this deployment, I was, uh, before we went out on deployment, I had made a petty officer second class and I got promoted to day check supervisor, um, work center supervisor of the plane captain branch. So I went out on that deployment out of uh, Yakuska and I had been in about three years at that point and that was a six month deployment. So I had been in after that six months, it was three and a half, three and a half years. And I only had about six or seven more months left once I got back from that my second and last deployment. So I finished up it's my uh, working in Japan. I was an E5, petty officer second class. Once I hit my four year mark, they flew me from Japan to Seattle. And that's where I processed out of uh, uh, Washington, um, a submarine base up near uh, Seattle. I forget, I think it was called Bremerton or something with a B. And that's where I processed out of. Then they flew me from Seattle after I processed out back to my hometown in Southern California. And from there, as you guys know, I did one year of active reserves. So I got out of active duty. So I got out of active duty at four years and I transferred to the active reserves where I did that for one year. And all that is, is the weekend warrior. I went down to San Diego one weekend out of the out of the month. And I didn't like being in the active reserves. I was like, this is bullshit. Like, I have made a video on it, why I got out of the active reserves. It's on my channel a couple months ago. But uh, I was only in it for one year. So that brought me up to five years. And then uh, I got out of active reserves in 2015. And now it's 2017 and I'm almost done with my full eight year obligation because you know I depped in in 2009, left for boot camp in 2010. I'll be uh, completely free from the military, my eight year obligation um, coming up in a couple months here in 2017. So that's pretty much, that's my whole military fucking story for you guys. Um, I didn't want to go into super detail because that would be like a mil, that would, I mean there's so, there's so many details or little things I can say. That was just a general overview of my Navy career and my deployments and where I went and just kind of a timeline so you guys can just judge. All right guys, I recorded the outro as I was on the freeway, but now I'm getting off the freeway and I just wanna, you know, I want it to be better audio quality for this outro.
because the freeway it gets too loud man and holy shit look at these clouds if these are not ominous as fuck oh, i timed this video perfectly i was like okay it's not raining there's sun i'm gonna try to film this before it starts pouring again but all right guys if you join this <coughs> english justin do you speak it justin if you guys enjoyed this video definitely definitely give it a thumbs up and let me know if you liked it and want to see more this like this is not going to be a commonplace type video i'm not going to do like a super long story type shit this is only specifically for this type of story because i'm trying to tell my whole navy story at once and i'm trying to condense it all and make it as understandable and relatable for you guys as you can because i know if i get into a lot of detail and start using all these fucking terms and shit you guys are just gonna it's, it's gonna go over your head because i know a lot of you guys are um, going, you know, you're going into the military, so, you know, you're not accustomed to all the abbreviations and verbiage and, and stuff that I would use. So, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed my Navy story, uh, like I said, let me know, give it a thumbs up, thank you guys so much for all the support, fucking love the fam, I love the fam, what a fam, I fucking love you guys. On the road to 100,000 subscribers, on the road again, on the road again. Alright guys, I'm gonna sing some Willie Nelson to end this video. Social media below as always. Go boo! Going places that my purple and my friend. Just can't wait to get on the road again. We're on the road again. highway. There's some best friends. highway. I'm doing it my way. On the road again, beating dang it and down. Just can't wait to get on the road again, beating dang it and down. Going places that my same people as my friends. Oh, just can't wait to get on the road again. On the road again, we're out and down, 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 down the highway. Here's the best of friends, saying ding, down, seeing a bang, ding, down the highway. I'm doing it my way. On the road again, baby, ding, 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 ding. I just can't wait to get on the road again, baby, 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 baby. Seeing people, doggies, seeing people and the music and my friends. I just can't wait to get on the road again, on the road again. Seeing people down the highway doing them my way. I'm touching the balls, yeah. Wait, what? I said, what's what in the butts? If you guys are still watching this video, if you've been listening, <laughs> if you listen to all of that, Willie Nelson, then let me know in the comments if you made it this fucking far. Just give me a comment. Uh, say, Willie Nelson's balls. No, no, no. Say, Willie balls. Willie balls, if you made it this far. All right, now I'm actually to my pasta. Road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Life I love is making music with my friends. And I can't wait to get on the road again.